I'd like to thank all of you for your positive feedback from my videos. Um, it seems like people are watching them. Um, do me a favor, if you are interested in a specific topic or you have questions, um, and you know me personally, don't, uh, don't send me an email or a text. Just put them in the comment section and I'll address them in a future video. Um, today's topic is going to be um, change. Uh, I originally thought of it as fear of change, um, but I simply want to talk about change and it's something that I'm dealing with uh, on a daily basis. Um, and there is an element of fear to it. Uh, I've been teaching for over a decade and uh, this year is unlike any I have ever uh, experienced in the past. And there's a lot to be scared of. Um, and then I was sitting thinking trying to figure out what I was scared of with our gen program and if I was really honest with myself the answer is loss of control. Um, for those that know me I like to control the situation. It makes me feel safe. It makes me feel like uh, I have a handle on things. Uh, everybody do this. Everybody does it. I'm happy. When I'm happy, everyone's happy. Uh, that's probably not the best way to handle things. Um, and what I'm learning is that it's not that I'm losing control. It's that my role's changing. Um, and the students are gaining control. Um, words like choice and voice become cliche and overused. Um, but as I sit here thinking about, all right, well, what is important to me as a teacher? Um, to me, my fear was they're not going to be learning. They're not going to be, I'm not teaching them what they need to know. Uh, and that should sort of stop myself right there. What they need to know, I don't have a monopoly on that. Um, there are some things that I think would be really helpful to them in the long run, uh, but I don't know that there's anything that anyone needs to know. Um, there's my opinion of what they need to know. Um, there's their opinion of what they need to know. So to me, what was important uh, as a teacher to have sort of, I don't know, um, pride, my ethics, my morality satisfied, was that they're learning, that they're learning content, um, that they're learning skills that they need. I've been a huge fan uh, ever since I started teaching of the hidden curriculum. Um, those soft skills, those hidden skills, the ability to carry on a conversation, what my mentor used to call uh, conversational literacy. I think those are important. I think the ability to make a phone call to an adult is an important skill that they should have, but that's not really taught in U.S. history. Um, so here's what I found after 10 days of Arjun, is that I can relinquish control if the proper placement is, uh, if the proper procedures are in place. And realistically, I boiled that down to two things, and they work hand in hand, accountability and ownership. Um, taking the second one first, if the students have ownership of what they're learning and how they're learning it, um, sometimes they don't always have choice. It's U.S. history. You have to learn about our role, the, our role in World War II. You have to learn uh, who FDR was and why the New Deal was important to the U.S. economy. Um, but so the, the kids aren't controlling the whole curriculum, they may have choice in a unit. They may have choice in how they get that information. They don't have to listen to me talk. They can get it in a, from a variety of ways. But they're owning an element of their education. And that can be on a small scale or a big scale. Um, with our gen, it's on a pretty big scale. Um, the second element is accountability. And I think we all do that. We hold them accountable whether it's lecture discussion, whether it's read this chapter, answer these questions, there's accountability. Um, and that doesn't leave in personalized learning. Accountability is one of the most important parts. Um, and if you pair that with ownership, then you've got students who are invested and you've got students that uh, are tracking their own progress. This is not new concepts to many people, 
but it was one of the things that got me over my fear of change. Um, and it's important to realize that when you are trying something new, um, you're trying something new. It's not what you've always done in the past. And I've had to catch myself when I relinquish control. If a student's going to own something, um, they're going to own it. They're going to make the decisions. And they're learning through a different way. They're learning by doing. And that could be one of the most important lessons that they learn. Um, my job is to monitor that situation, follow what they're doing, uh, and decide when it's time to step in and give a suggestion, when it's time to stop them and turn them around, um, when it's time to help pick them up and dust them off when things go terribly wrong and figure out what happened and how to get better. Because um, isn't that what we're all trying to do, is get better, be better today than you were yesterday, learn from your mistakes. And so for me, uh, that's been my biggest struggle with change. Uh, I'm flying without a map, I'm building without a blueprint. Um, first steps is making a foundation for a program uh, that hasn't been made here before. So while I may be working diligently on building that foundation, um, there is a fear that once we start building on it, it'll all collapse, but hopefully uh, my fear of change and the new and the different, um, I'm certain will be overcome by all of the good that's happening. So thanks for watching. Um, again, if you have any other situations you'd like me to address, how I'm handling them, uh, hopefully I'll get to them all uh, eventually, but if you have suggestions, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with them right away. So uh, thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.